Okay. Uh, good afternoon everybody, I am uh, DK Pandav from Ohio State University and my colleague uh, Dr. Jiavi Lu, um, so we will try to um, share the presentation. Um, so today's uh, focus will be uh, how do we build efficient HPC clouds with a good MPI stack as well as open stack using the latest and greatest uh, from the virtualization side which is SRIOV and um, InfiniMan. As most of us know in this uh, community, I mean the, we are trying to have a very high performance cloud computing. Uh, we know that the cloud computing um, focuses on maximizing the effectiveness of the shared resources and virtualization is one of the key component there. And uh, gradually these kind of environments are being uh, widely adopted in the environment. Um, here just a forecast it says like uh, will be the uh, especially public IT cloud um, will be spending around like 108 billion by the next year. Now the question is how, what are the challenges trying to bring both the HPC with the cloud this is what we will be trying to focus on. Now the main thing is the performance as you know high performance computing we always want to get the maximum performance we do not want to lose the performance and especially when we go with the cloud computing with virtualization there is always some overhead. So this is where like our work uh, fits in so how do we bring both these things together so that we can deliver the virtualization and cloud environment with the best performance as possible. Now of course there are different kinds of HPC cloud examples, I mean most of you are familiar with Amazon EC2 um, like uses the single root IO virtualization or SIOV, we have been hearing that in many talks, I will very quickly introduce that in the next um, slide, um, that is like a 10 gigi. Uh, earlier today also we heard about the, uh, this is the new Chameleon cloud uh, which is funded by US National Science Foundation, uh, uh, Dr. Kate Kee, uh, introduced that, in fact there is a parallel session going on. Um, exactly describing that uh, cloud test bed. Um, so this provides a short overview of that. Uh, uh, this was uh, funded through US National Science Foundation. Um, it is a combination of different universities. Um, um, myself from Ohio State is involved, uh, but the TAC which is the Texas Advanced Computing Center in the Texas Austin, um, sorry. And uh, the Chicago Compute, uh, Computation Institute and also the UTSA. Um, everybody is involved, but the broad idea here is that this system is very different than let us say what you see in the NSF exceed system where you get an account uh, for your computational need. So here it is primarily targeted to, to really experiment with virtualization. So that is the key goal that it is not just for cycles for your applications, but how you can innovate newer kind of things using the um, uh, uh, virtualization environment. So there are around like 650 nodes, almost 14,000 cores. Uh, they are divided into two sites. One is at the Texas, and then the other one is in Chicago. They are connected with 100 gigi network, and this is purely reconfigurable. You can get bare metal configuration. Uh, different kinds of appliances are being distributed. I um, will mention that a little bit later, um, and also you can experiment with different kinds of instruments. So that's what we heard, like from the little bit earlier. Those are the newer environments, and how do you build, test and debug all those kind of things and this uh, cloud test bed is exactly geared for um, experimenting with this. So with that kind of a high level perspective, um, let, let me go into a little bit details um, of the SRIOV, I am um, assuming most of you might be knowing. Um, so this is the uh, kind of a technology which tries to provide um, HPC cloud with very little overhead. So if here if you see uh, typically there are multiple guests, so the objective is that we have a single physical device or a hardware is or a physical function is actually being presented itself as much multiple virtual devices or virtual functions. And then the VFs are designed based on the existing non-virtualized VFs and each VF can be dedicated um, to a single VM through PCI pass through. And this technology has been there for the ethernet side for many years and then a few years back Mellanox also tried to introduce this um, on the InfiniMan side. So how many of you know about InfiniMAN? Yes, quite a few, yes, that is good. So, so this technology was introduced like in the year 2000 and it has been already like running for almost 16 years now. Um, it has a lot of cool features, especially the RDMA started with that, uh, but that gradually has gone to other kinds of technologies like the iWarp. There is a new convergence also happening uh, called RDMA over converged enhanced Ethernet or called Rocky. It is like an InfiniMAN software with Ethernet hardware. And these technologies are providing very good performance. If you take some latest measurements, you will see like the latency from the node to node 
you can actually achieve like in one microsecond and also with the latest uh, EDR um, InfiniBand, you can get 100 gigabits per second. And the third one which is very important is that since you offload a lot of things and you use RDMA, it has very low CPU overhead. So that is also the third dimension which comes into picture so that when you run your application, your network protocol processing does not interfere with, with your CPU for the application. So you get very good overlap of computation and communication and, and scalability. So during the last uh, 15 years, there is also an organization called Open Fabrics. Um, uh, it's just like think of just like the um, operating system kernels are being developed in the Linux environment, similar kind of things, all these protocols are being designed and developed in an open source manner uh, with this open fabric stack. So, so people are buying all these hardware, putting the open fabric software stack and then large and large clusters are being deployed. Um, and already in the HPC side, of course, InfiniBand is, is being very heavily used. Um, uh, almost in the last uh, November 15th ranking, you will see 43% of the, of the, all the uh, clusters or the supercomputers in the world use InfiniBand. And, uh, but the challenge here is that how we bring that kind of uh, environment uh, to HPC cloud. Um, so in this context, let me uh, introduce the project. Uh, some of you might have heard of this. Uh, this is a high performance MPI project from my group. Uh, we started almost this work in the year 2000 when InfiniBand just came in and the first release was made actually in the supercomputing 2002, almost 14 years back. And uh, it had originally MPI 1 standard and as MPI standard has been evolving, of course we have been following that and we are coming up with all these supporting all the features. But in addition to that, we also have a lot of, since the field is moving very fast, we also have a lot of optimized versions for PGAS, hybrid MPI PGAS. GP, GPU based systems, Intel mic systems, virtualization, as well as like energy awareness, uh, like a really production MPI stack which can optimize energy uh, for your application in a very transparent manner. So those are all the different kinds of the libraries we have. Um, it is being very widely used. Currently the user base stands at more than 2,500 organizations in 79 countries. And these are again based on voluntary registration. Anybody can download our uh, libraries for free. Um, we just have a link saying uh, if somebody wants to be registered officially, uh, they just provide the support. Many people just uh, download it uh, without identifying them. And uh, we crossed like uh, last week more than 365,000 download just from our site. Um, of course, it is people use it in all different forms with all different stacks. Um, if you take a look at the Red Hat stack or SUSE disk, you will see our stack is integrated there with, together with a lot of server vendors stack, so we do not keep track of those. But not only that, we have also been providing the best performance and scalability to, to the stack um, over the years. Um, I remember when the technology was very new in the year 2000, we had real trouble running four node InfiniBand with MPI. This is in 2000 I am talking about. And now we have scaled our stack, which is running on all these machines in a production manner, like tax, stampede, half million cores. Um, so we have taken really uh, the things from a very experimental things to a real production quality software. So, so we have been in this HPC field, if some of you are familiar, like um, in the very first InfiniBand um, cluster was Virginia Tech's uh, System X, that was in 2003. Uh, in fact, we enabled them, we worked very closely with them to bring that kind of a first system to, to the top 500. And since then, over the last uh, 15 years, we have been working with all different vendors, organizations to push the envelope of um, InfiniBand. So this is a very broad chart. It shows all the overview of the um, MPI architecture. We not only support MPI, PGAS, hybrid MPI, PX, um, P MPI plus X. We also support all the different technology, not only the traditional InfiniBand, now the new OmniPath also is there. Um, we also have all different platform, Intel Geon, Open Power. Uh, we are working on KNL, NVIDIA GP, GPUs. So, so this is where the middle part, this is where our research and development focuses on, we try to come up with the best solutions and the designs and then try to incorporate into the, um, into the stack. And this shows like how the stack has been, been widely used. Uh, this is just the, the timeline and the downloads of all different releases. Uh, we are in a very uh, rapid um, uh, steady curve um, um, moving ahead. So um, of course these are the different kinds of libraries I, I introduced, but for this talk today, uh, we'll mostly be focusing on this HPC cloud uh, with MPI and InfiniBand, that is the the, the package called MVAP is to virtualization. 
Now, in addition to this, uh, the traditional MPI things um, for the last four years, uh, we are also focusing a lot on big data because that's what you have been hearing a lot. Um, so, what we have done is, uh, of course, the Hadoop, Spark, Memcached, these kind of big data stacks, uh, they don't use the traditional MPI. Uh, so, what we did is we took a lot of knowledge from our MPI stack to 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 these stacks. So, the same code cannot run, but we took a lot of knowledge. And then over the years, we have actually made similar to the MPI project, uh, MPI libraries, we have made a lot of these stacks RDM enabled. So, uh, if you just go to this high BD, uh, we call it high performance big data. Um, so, that uh, uh, place you can download all these things. We have RDMA for Apache Spark, uh, RDMA for Apache Hadoop, Hadoop uh, Memcached. Um, similar to those of you who are familiar on the MPI side, we have a OSU MPI micro benchmark suite, similar kind of things we have introduced here also. Uh, OSU high BD benchmark, so that you can do a lot of benchmarking uh, with um, uh, uh, with uh, the big data stack. And these are again available for both for InfiniBand as well as Rocky. And uh, we opened it up around like 18 months back, and by now we have around 165 organizations uh, from 22 countries, and we have already like six, more than 16,000 downloads uh, from our site. So, with that kind of a background, so what let me try to focus, we will try to give you the latest uh, along four directions. So, the first one is of course, the MIBIS to virtualization, the basic virtualization with SRIOB and IBIS MEM. So, this is the new component which we have added and this can be used both in either standalone mode or open stack mode and then we will go into, uh, go into the details of trying to carry out enhancement to the slurm. Um, uh, the Spank plugin kind of an approach so that we can run our virtualization stack with Slurm with that plugin uh, very efficiently. And then the third thing we will be talking about the MAP is to with containers. And the final thing I introduced the Chameleon Cloud. So, there as we have been uh, trying to design these stacks, not only you can download these uh, independently from our site, but we are also trying to create appliances with these, these stacks so that they are available on the on the Chameleon test bed. So, in the end users, you do not have to worry about any deployment. You just click and then proceed with your um, experiments. So, let me start with the first one. So, this is the MFAPIS2 virtualization. This is the latest release, um, which has been there for several months and we are working on the 2.2 release. Um, so, so this uh, supports the very high performance MPI communication uh, with SRIOV. And the new thing which we have brought here is the locality aware. MPI communication and I will go into more details in the next few slide. Um, you can also detect a lot of auto detection of the IBIS MEM um, and all other kinds of integration with OpenStack. So, the main thing here if you see like think of like the traditional like the server architectures, um, most of these days I mean the servers have many cores or multi cores within the node and traditional MPI stack if you see when you go over the network, you use the network functionality. But when you come within the node, there are a lot of techniques which have been designed over the years like a shared memory, uh, two sided copy, um, there is a CMA, LIMIC, which are like kernel based one sided copy to optimize performance on within the node. Okay? So, this has been available with the MPI stacks for, for many years. But when you go to the virtualization, all those things are not there. Okay? So, when you try to run some virtual machines, so even though you run it on let us say you have a, a 32 core um, a node, um, you run virtual machines, these virtual machines do not know that they are running next to each other. Okay? They still go over the network and then that leads to poor performance. So, this is where we try to um, attack and see whether we can carry out some new designs and this is where we introduced a new module called IBIS MEM. And using that module, you can actually do very fast intra node communication. So, these virtual machines can talk to each other much more faster um, compared to what they can do communication outside. But not only that, the, the bigger thing is that virtualization as you know, the biggest benefit is migration that I can move virtual machines quickly. But now think like there are two nodes A and B, if, if there is a VM 1 running here and VM 2 running here and let us say you migrate the VM 2 to VM 1 and they are started running on the same node, can they automatically detect that no, look now I am within this node. So, in not, not outside, so I should change the network protocol from the traditional network to shared memory network. So, so we are trying to bring those kind of intelligence um, to, to the stack. So, this is where we try to introduce the locality detector, communication coordinator. So, there are a lot of modules we have, we have put. Uh, so, not only to, to deliver you the best performance within the node, 
but also it can work very well with the migration and, and give you the, the best benefit. So that is like the native design and the same design so we have taken it to the, to, to the open stack. Um, so in the open stack what we try to do is the NOVA module. Um, so in this NOVA module we made the, all the appropriate uh, changes um, so that you can deploy this with open stack um, supporting the, the SRIOV configuration, uh, supporting the IBSPM configuration and also these virtual machine aware, VM aware designs as I indicated um, earlier. So all these techniques can actually help you uh, to, to build your HPC clouds in a very practical manner um, to, to get the, uh, the performance. So now let me show you some of the numbers, what you can get. Um, so three kinds of numbers I'll be trying to show. One is a now lab cloud. This is like my lab. We have set up a small cloud. We'll try to also compare with the uh, Amazon EC2. Uh, but as you know, the Amazon EC2 is a 10 gigi, so there will be a little bit difference. And I'll also try to show you the, uh, the performance numbers on the Chameleon Cloud, which is uh, infinite. So, so let me show you these numbers in a step-by-step -step manner. So of course, the point-to-point, -point, um, anytime we want to make sure that uh, uh, the point-to-point -point communication within the node, inter-node, intra-node are, are done well, as well as some um, application-based uh, numbers. So if you take a look at this, this is where we are trying to show intra-node. That means the, uh, the VMs are running um, within, the, uh, within the node. And the different graphs, um, what it's trying to show, uh, this is like the, 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 the top line is like the MHPS2 default. Okay? So that means this is not our optimized version, this is the basic MHPS2 okay? or any other MPI stack. Uh, if you run it in a virtualization environment, yes, it will run. Okay? But the question is, will it give performance? Okay, the orange line is the optimized design, which I indicated in the in the earlier few slides, and then this gray line is the native. That means the best one you can get without virtualization. If you have the InfiniBand, basic InfiniBand, that is the best you can get. And our objective is to bridge this gap so that this orange line should come very close to the gray line. Okay, and and earlier few years back, if you would be seeing this overhead used to be very high. Okay, and that's what we are trying to achieve. And uh, and of course this orange line, the design is much more better than the, um, uh, the, the, the light green line. And, and as a reference, uh, the, the black line is actually the, just for a reference sake, people try to ask saying how it compares with uh, EC2. So those are the kind of numbers. Uh, but let's not focus on that. That is just for a reference. But the bigger thing is that if you see the, with the gray, compared to the gray line, we are substantially able to optimize it. And compared to the gray, you see at different ranges, this is the Intranode, uh, the left hand is latency, like a half of round trip. And we are able to close very close to the native, only 3%, 7% degradation on different message sizes. And on the right hand side, it is the bandwidth, the rate at which we can pump data from one node to the other node. So here again, we see around like a 3% to 8% difference. And that is very, this orange design is, is very high performance compared to, to the green line you see. Because that green line is the one most of the people use in a virtualized environment. Just any other MPI stack, you just download and run, uh, including our basic MRPS2, but it will not give you the performance as, as expected. So then this one is trying to show the performance in the inter node. Uh, that means within the node, um, we are trying to show similar kind of things. And here you will see again, the orange line is very close to the, uh, to, to the gray line. Um, only like we see compared to the native, uh, you only have like 2% to 8% um, overhead. Um, and then we try to run some experiments. Those are like the the point-to-point uh, -point numbers, but let's say uh, how how it uh, affects the application. So these are the standard, like you know the HPC. We have NAS applications or some um, communication-intensive graph 500 applications. Um, so we are trying to show three numbers again. Uh, this the the default and the orange and the gray. That's where we want to show. Uh, here you see only like a one one percent or nine percent, four percent. That kind of difference is there. So that means through these kind of techniques, what we are trying to propose, you can actually come very close to the, to the native. Okay? Of course, we are continuously improving things. Even the SRIV driver is also being optimized. So we'll try to see uh, the ideal thing will be even to bring it to even better than this. Okay? Um, and these are the, some of the numbers on the, on the Chameleon testbed. Um, similar kind of things like a graph 500. And this is the spec um, MPI. Um, uh, that is the, uh, a set of different kinds of applications. Uh, so there again, you will see um, the, the gap is only like a 1% or 9.5%. Uh, and obviously, you can see compared to the, the basic um, MPI stack, um, this orange line is much more better. So that is the 
optimized one. Um, so, with this let me um, uh, move to, to Jiawi. So, he will cover the, the next two topics and then I will come and then talk about the um, appliances. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. So, uh, Don Fanda just mentioned what we have done for uh, basic AMRP2 uh, with, uh, with SRV and IV uh, enhancement. So, the, now I'm going to cover another two topics, uh, which is going to run MRP2 word on top of SNR. Okay, uh, some of you may know that SNR is very popular in HPC clusters, right? Uh, lots of supercomputers, they are using SNR to do the resource scheduling and the job submission management, those kind of things. Then this motivates motivate us to think that can HPC clouds actually be built with MRP2 word uh, on top of SNR. Okay, so then we have to answer following questions. For example, the first one is how to build a SNR based HPC cloud with near native performance for MP applications over SRV enabled infinity band HPC clusters. And the second thing is what kind of requirements actually for SNR to support SRV and management per, uh, resources provided in HPC clouds. And then third one is how much performance benefits can be achieved for both MPI prim primitive operations as well as applications. Okay, before I go, go to there, let, let's take a look what kind of typical use, usage scenarios when we run MPI jobs on top of SNR uh, based environment. So first is like exclusive allocation, the sequential jobs. This is like a traditional way we, uh, very typical way we run our jobs on top of SNR. So everybody get their own uh, host and the VM run on top of that and then we run MPI jobs there. So for example, there are two VMs. The pink box means the first function of SRV and then the yellow one is Irishman. So in this case, these two VMs can do inter uh, VM internode sharing memory based communication, okay? The second case is we, we also do e exclusive allocation, but we may run concurrent jobs because uh, I may have multiple jobs. I got these nodes, I want to run them uh, concurrently. So, in, so the, the, the red MPA, the red box of, uh, stands for the one MPA job and the blue one is the second one. So in this case, because I need to, because these different jobs, they were, they were, they were running with different uh, shared memory region, right? So in this case, the Avishman one, that you, need, you need two Avishman devices. One, the two, like a two yellow uh, box shows that. And then, of course, SRV uh, virtual function also needed. Okay, and then the third case is because we're talking about uh, cloud, right? The resource sharing is very uh, common uh, requirement for that. So in this case, lots, may, maybe we'll, run, uh, we'll get shared host allocations and then we run concurrent jobs from different users or even for same users. So here we show like four VMs on the same host. So in this case, we definitely you need a full like a for SRV for functions. And then, and then for, for different MPI jobs, you, you also need to use different avishment device for that. So through this, what we want to say that is actually we see that when we, if you want to run these applications in these scenarios in, with high performance, we have to manage and isolating the virtualized resources of SRV and avishment, right? Otherwise, it may get uh, conflict with each other. But the problem is, we first want to see whether this can be done in MPI library alone. But actually, we found it's hard because for, for MPI library, I only know what I'm running. I don't know what others are running, right? So I don't have the global picture for that. But actually, it's much easier for SNR because SNR, has er he, he knows everything. He's all the resource, how to get it scheduled, how to get allocated, how the job get it scheduled. They know everything. So it's much easier if you do something in SNR, right? So this, this, saying, this actually uh, led us to think that efficient running MPI applications on HPC clouds needs SNR to support and manage SRV and management devices. So then we want to uh, further uh, ask two questions and, uh, and going to find the answer for that. First one is, can critical HPC resource be efficiently shared among users um, uh, by extending SNR? with support of, uh, for SRV and Avishman. Second one is, can SRV and Avishman enable the SNR and the MPI library provide, we also want to have the bare metal performance for end applications, okay? So uh, before I go into uh, detailed designs, I want to first to just give a give an overview what what we need, all the functions we need to, to run uh, MPI pitch to word on top of SNR. So this is like a SNR control D and a SNR D demons on your uh, cluster, like HPC computer nodes. So basically sometimes, basically you provide your uh, job file and also the VM configuration, your requirement for VMs, and then we submit the job, and get, the, get the physical physical resources. And then we, based on this physical resource, we, we are going to launch the VMs. 
So you know, in VM launch steps, basically you need to cover like a, we need to select with our refresh function. We need to select that, uh, configure every HTML device, network setting, image image management, extra something like that. So then the VM is there, and then you can launch your MPI jobs on, on these VMs. So this is like a basic functionalities, right? Uh, and then what what we are what 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 we are going to do is. So, because SNR provide a very good plugin-based architecture, you, we 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 provide like a, a, a plugin based on a Spunk plugin architecture. So here there are three uh, modulars. First one is uh, VM configure re uh, reader. So when you when you uh, launch your job, we we will get we will read the VM configuration information and then register all these informations so that all the nodes and the, all the nodes you get this uh, information. Okay. And then when you launch jobs, we will load our uh, plugin to launch the VMs to set up VMs on each allocated nodes. So here, two things we, we want to highlight that we, we use Firebase log to detect occupied first function and then exclusively allocate free uh, VMs to, so that we can, uh, you can, we can isolate the uh, SRV first functions. And then we also do uh, kind of, like we assign a unique ID to each IV shipment device so that we can dynamically attach to uh, different device to different VMs. So in this way, we can manage and, uh, and isolate this, these resources. And of course, after you're done, you, you need to tear down your VMs and also reclaim the resources. So, so through the plugin-based approach, actually you can get uh, different benefits from different perspectives. For example, first one is the coordination. With global information, SNR plugin can, uh, ma can manage SRV and the uh, efficient resources much easily for concurrent jobs and multiple users. And then also for performance, pro possibly you can get the faster coordination and also kind of like a SRV or efficient on weighted resource scheduling. And then scalability, you can take advantage of uh, SNR architecture for tolerance, permission, security, or many of these things as actually can, can, uh, can get from uh, SNR. Okay, now because everybody here interested with OpenStack, right? So then we want to we want to ask whether this approach can work with OpenStack. Okay, so let's assume that actually in your HPC cloud you have Snarl, you may have OpenStack in somewhere as well. So in this case, whatever I have I have presented in earlier two or three slides actually has been done in OpenStack, right? Image management, network setting, and the virtual machine launching those kind of things. And, and then this motivates, motivates to think that why we not offload these things to OpenStack, right? So in this case, what we, have, what we are doing here is we still need the plugin to read the VM uh, because user launched their jobs through Snarl, right? We still need to read the information from there. And then we just offload all these tasks, VM creating those kind of tasks to OpenStack infrastructure, right? And then for example, in OpenStack, we can use a PCI whitelist to pass through the uh, free first function to VMs so we don't have to do anything OpenStack support that, we use it. And then, just like uh, what Dr. Manas mentioned earlier, we, we extend this uh, LOVA to enable the IVC when we launch VMs so that we can both ma efficiently utilize SNR architecture and also OpenStack architecture. That, that's the basic idea we have for this work. So we have presented this work. Uh, we have actually, this paper just got accepted in Europe 2016 this year. So we are going to present this work in, in that conference as well. So definitely, so there's um, uh, many benefits from this approach, right? So for example, easy management, definitely, we can directly use underlying OpenStack inf infrastructure to manage authentication, image, image, and the networking, those kind of stuff. And then, uh, because the whole community, they're, they're working very hard to optimize different components, okay? Dif we can also utilize these uh, optimizations in a transparent manner. And then scalability-wide, also, we can take advantage of the scalable architecture for both uh, OpenStack and also SNR. Uh, and the so performance is very good. I, I will show some numbers later. So here is actually, if we want to compare it and the total VM deployment or startup time, we see that if we implement those uh, functionalities as I showed in earlier slides through some scripts, this is like a task-based approach, or use the Spunk plugin-based approach, or use the Spunk plugin plus OpenStack approach, we see that actually Spunk plus OpenStack approach is a promising way, right? It, it, can, it can provide much better performance than the other uh, two uh, approaches. And then because earlier we, we mentioned that we have like, t typically we have three different kind of scenarios to run your MPI jobs or applications on top of uh, SNR. So we want to see that with these designs, what we have done here, so whether we are able to achieve good performance. So as we can see, we run the uh, applications 
like Graph 500 on uh, Chameleon Cloud, like 32 VMs across eight nodes. And the one thing now that I want to mention that is when we run these jobs, like I said, we, we will run another NAS job. Okay, so for example, for the for the for the for the uh, right side and uh, two case like a shared host allocation concurrent job and exclusive allocation concurrent job, we are run another NAS job concurrently. We want to see whether first first function functional wise whether they can run, right? The isolation of SRV and Sherman whether it work or not. Second second thing is we want to see whether the performance get uh, uh, influenced significantly or 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 just a minor 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 influence. So first let's take a look at numbers. So for the exclusive allocation and the security job, this is what we have presented in Dr. Panda's uh, slides. We see that like, compared to native, less than 4% overhead. Okay. And then for the shared allocation and the exclusive allocation for concurrent jobs, we also don't see too much overhead for that compared with native. Okay. So this is what we have done for uh, run the mrp 2 vert on top of SNR or on top of SNR plus OpenStack. So for the next uh, part, I want to go into talk about uh, how to run MRPG2 efficiently with container. So these days, container-based technology such as Docker, right, is very, it's becoming very hard because it provides the uh, lightweight virtualization solutions. It seems a very good way to build HPC clouds. So then actually what, what we are trying to first to, to see is if you run default MRP, MPI library with containers together, we want to see whether the performance is really good or not. If not good, what kind of performance bottleneck is there? We want to first analyze that. Secondly, can we, if there's a bottleneck or if the, if the numbers looks not good, can we propose some new design to overcome these bottlenecks? I will introduce something later for, for these questions. And then third thing is can optimize design deliver near native performance for different container deployment scenarios? And the last one is like, uh, what the panda mentioned earlier, we have locality where we design for MRP to work, right? We want to see whether that design can also help for container uh, environment as well. So, as, as some of you may know, right, there like uh, there is a kernel-based uh, internal uh, memory copy approach, like a, which is called CMA, cross memory attach. This uh, kernel-based uh, memory copy pro uh, technique, and also shared memory, like the panda mentioned earlier in, in the in the slides for MPI communication across co-resident containers in the same host. So we want to see whether the locality we are designed can enable both of these techniques. Okay, so let's take a look at some numbers here. So first, uh, I want to uh, highlight that is the green line. That's the, if you run MPI library with container in a default manner. So you don't do anything, definitely they can run. But if, as you can see here, right, actually the performance is not good. This is for internal inter-container communication, okay? The main reason is, is, is actually because they can't utilize the shared memory or the CMA-based communication approach. So with our proposed design, we do locality aware design for, uh, op for, this, for, for, the, for optimizing this, uh, uh, this part. We see that the, green, the, the, yellow, the yellow one is ours, so, and then the, the gray one is the native. As we can see that compared with default, we can achieve very good performance like uh, 81 or 191 percent improvement for latency and bandwidth, and also compared to with native, there's only very minor overhead if you see these uh, numbers. That's the uh, that's the point-to-point -point communication, and then we want to also take a look at the collective communications. So here we run or reduce and or gather. So similarly, the green line is the uh, if you run MPI library for or reduce in containers in default manner, actually. We also see some overhead. We also see a good, uh, huge overhead is there compared with the native. But if you run our optimal design, you can see that we improve like a 64% or 86% compared with default way. But it's also minor overhead compared with uh, native environment if you run MPI on that. And then third, the third evaluation we we want to we want to do some application level studies. So here we run loss and the graph 500. Okay, the st still. As we can see, this is like uh, 64 containers across 16 nodes. This is on Chameleon. Compared with the default way, we can achieve up to 11% or 16% experience time reduction for NAS and the Graph 500. And if we compare the native, we only see like less than 9% or 4% overhead. Okay, so this optimized container support will be available 
with upcoming release of our uh, MAPI2 world library. OK, with this, uh, I will hand over to Dr. Panda. OK. Um, so we saw the, the Slurm-based design uh, with the Slurm plus OpenStack and then with containers. Um, the containers-based design, as we said, uh, will be available. In fact, we are working on it. In a few weeks, uh, you will see the, uh, the new release uh, will be coming out. Uh, I earlier indicated also the Chameleon Cloud. Um, so not only like we can, uh, you people can directly use it, but on the Chameleon Cloud, we are trying to make the life much more easier for people to experiment with. So we have designed the three of the appliances here. Um, so this, uh, the first two appliances is very simple, just the SR IOV and InfiniMAT. Um, so that if you just want to uh, work on a bare metal configuration, you don't have to worry about anything. These appliances are public, just click it and then uh, you are ready to go. And then we have provided the MVAPIS to virtualization with the SR IOV. Um, and also the, I included the, uh, the high performance big data. So we have taken the RDMA Hadoop. So now the RDMA Hadoop also we have converted it to an appliance. We just made it available three days back. Uh, on the uh, Chameleon site. Um, so if any one of you have an account there, you should be able to use any of these uh, directly now. So with this, let me conclude here. Uh, what we presented that uh, the MAP2 virtualization, the approach we are taking, uh, trying to take the best of SRIOE uh, and the IB SMEM uh, can actually be used to, to build HPC Cloud, uh, either is in standalone manner or also in the OpenStack um, manner. And uh, especially now to integrate with the Slurm, we have a set of solutions. Uh, uh, once again, you can use it Slurm alone or Slurm plus OpenStack. And then uh, we are working on these container-based things, and that's what will be available very, uh, very soon. And as we keep on uh, working on this project, um, um, in the near future, you will see the other kinds of MVP2 libraries. I didn't talk about that. Uh, uh, virtualization, people want to use for all environments. People want to combine GPU with, with uh, virtualization. Uh, people want to combine the PGAS kind of environment. And of course, the, the mic, uh, KNL, a lot of excitement things are taking place. Um, so our plan is that as we develop the high performance libraries, the MPI libraries uh, for those environments, we also want to bring the SRIOV or the virtualization container in a separate dimension and then try to bridge the gap. Um, so that, that provides the complete freedom uh, to the HPC community to either go through a very dedicated environment or a uh, HPC cloud environment. And similar kind of things, we also want to do it with the RDMA Spark, RDMA MMCACHD um, kind of thing. So, so with this, let me um, conclude here. We have a few minutes, and uh, um, we'll be very happy to, uh, to answer your questions. Any questions? Yes, Suspend. Yeah. So, so basically, the question is, I think Paul is asking if you, in a real environment, by giving a signal, we want to suspend all of them at any time and then, uh, then bring them back at at a later time. So uh, job, yes. Yes. Um, you yeah. want to answer that? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we, I think ideally it, sh it definitely work, but with some, for example, some kind of. Uh, states we, we maintain, like I wish meant those kind of states, we may, this may introduce some challenges. Yeah. yeah. Before, before I get back to give you a concrete answer, maybe let me do some, something first. This is something in our yeah. things, uh, because if you remember, like our basic MPI stack, we have a uh, range of solution for checkpoint, checkpoint restart, migration. So those are happening in a native manner. Yeah. Okay. So, so now we need to revisit um, the similar kind of things. Um, in the uh, in the virtualization context, and then see whether um, I think it should be technically possible. As yeah. Javi said, we just need to make sure that we test it out. It may need some minor changes. Because yeah, I think this is one of the would be very one of the, the value adds of virtualization. Mm -hmm. None of these kind of checkpoint restart methodologies I, that I've tried in the past yes. have really worked on a broad range of applications. Mm -hmm. So. In a virtual environment, if you can do that, yes. that means you really can get high, higher efficiencies, and I can prioritize my workload. So when big professor, important guy comes along, <laughs> or the not important guys on the cluster, I can swap them out, keep big professor happy. <laughs> you know, 
sure. Okay. So, so you have a very good user case scenario <laughs> in your <laughs> university. That's yeah. good. We'll we'll try to support that. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So if not, I think we are almost exactly on time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.